We're now going to hear from both a learning disability psychiatrist and a registered nurse about Stomp LD. Hello, Daniel. I'm a consultant psychiatrist that specialises in the psychiatric care of people who have learning disabilities. I'm a registered nurse for people with learning disabilities and I'm also an independent prescriber. The doctor I spoke to said that too many people with learning disabilities are taking mental health medicine for their behaviour. What do you think about that? It is often people like me that have started the medications. The patient will come to us, often with carers, and they are having a terrible time. They may be upset or anxious and we try to help. They want a quick fix. The medication can be something that works really quickly and helps calm people down. We can sometimes diagnose a mental illness, but this is not always easy in people who have communication problems. When someone becomes stable, we would write to the GP and ask them to take over reviewing of their medication. Some GPs are not confident in doing this, and some may feel that if the patient has calmed, then the, medic the medicine is doing its job. Some may assume that the patient is still seeing the psychiatrist, Stomp LD is changing this and encouraging better reviews. So what can you do? We can make sure that people are using medication for behaviour as a last resort. When do we have to use it? We will write to the GP and clearly explain what symptoms the medication has been prescribed for and a time scale and plan for the reviews. We can help by giving the patient and their carers information about the medication, monitor its effects and remind them to contact their GP for reviews we can put into their care plan the recommended schedule of reviews with the GP and ourselves. We would ensure there is a plan for dealing with any relapse in behaviours and liaise with the local community learning disability team. Psychiatrists work closely with the multidisciplinary team and can ask them to do a whole range of assessments to help to identify causes of any difficult behaviours and then to work with the patient and their families to address the causes. To help them think about the behaviour and the medications, we'll hold regular reviews and tailor the information and care plan to the communication and understanding of each specific patient. If the behaviour is part of a mental illness or autistic spectrum disorder, such as a developmental disorder or ADHD, then specialist services may see the patient for longer. So, what would you do different to a family doctor? When we talk to the patients, and their care is about the medicines, we would probably do this in a very similar way to the GP. Is it difficult to get people off medicines? For drugs with a long half-life, like citalopram, for example, or for long-acting injections, withdrawal will take longer. For drugs with significant interactions, like carbamazepine, withdrawal may impact on the effects of the other drugs. The reduction may take some time and will be difficult on occasions. Sometimes if behaviours deteriorate, it can be difficult to judge whether there's a withdrawal effect, which usually occurs within the first week, or the person adapting to the absence of the drug, usually in the first month, or a return to the behaviours for which the drugs was initially prescribed, or the person is just more alert and the carers have difficulty with this, this impacting on the working practice. Check PRN usage in these circumstances. It is better to slow down the rate of reduction rather than sticking to a rigid plan if there are concerns about the behaviours. We need to be aware of the possible effects of reducing and stopping the medication. These are usually mild and self-limiting, but may be difficult to spot in people with a learning disability. Sudden withdrawal of psychotropic drugs may result in discontinuation effects. Some older antipsychotics worsen tardive dyskinesia. Most SSRIs and other antidepressants are associated with discontinuation effects. Flu-like symptoms, dizziness, insomnia and irritability are common. Benzodiazepine and Zeta drugs, at least one third of long-term users suffer discontinuation problems, stiffness, weakness and flu-like symptoms. I don't know what that all means, but I think the doctors will understand it. So if someone's finding it hard to come off the medicines or the carers don't want them to stop, what can you do? Psychiatrists can advise the GP about dose reduction and stopping psychotropic drugs even if they don't see the patient. For instance, make reductions realistic and gradual, 
Generally, we draw or reduce one drug at a time and choose the drug with the least evidence of side effects first. We have specialist services to help people during a period of crisis. Most areas in the country now have these. They can work with people to help them manage their behaviour and their feelings. We used to think medicines were the best way to help people with their behaviour. We now know there are better ways to do that. We need to ensure people can access these better ways, like positive behavioural support, and that medication is only used as a last resort and when there is a clear benefit to the patient. So, do you have any last things to say to other psychiatrists or nurse prescribers? My overriding message would be to try and make medication the last resort if possible. Try psychosocial and environmental options first. When necessary, review regularly the medications. The absence of symptoms does not necessarily mean that people are on the right day. And involve the multidisciplinary team. It's important to involve the carers and the individual themselves. Help them to understand the changes in the plan. Work out the reasons for the behaviour and try positive behaviour support plans. Great advice there from our psychiatrist and nurse. So to summarise, make medicines the last resort. Involve multidisciplinary team. Involve the carers and individuals to help them understand the changes and the plan. Work out the reason for the behaviour and try positive behaviour support plans. That is the end of this section. I hope you found it helpful.